Miss Ford. What's good? What's happening? How are you? I'm doing great. Welcome to the Making Plays Convo. And really, we're just going to be talking about all the phenomenal plays that you've been making throughout your career and how you made them. But I always like to ask, how are you and your people doing during these different times? I think that overall, we're all doing really well. Okay. We're all blessed. Everybody's happy, healthy. So I can't complain. That's what's up right there. Well, you've been making dope plays for a minute. I mean, obviously, you're a very accomplished singer, writer, a cannabis educator. You know, we're going <laughs> to definitely talk about that. Uh, you've worked with everybody from Macy Gray, Meek Mill. And by the way, I don't know, it was one of my favorite Meek Mill songs, you know. Uh just um, random fact, when I first heard it, I, I had it on repeat. Um, Snoop Dogg, and, and then you just released those that X tapes, which sounds really good. We definitely got to talk about that. Um, so salute to you. But like we said, 2020 has been kind of a different and weird year. But yeah. what were you working on before everything kind of started shutting down? We were, I mean, we were finishing X tapes. Um, we were actually getting into shooting the visual side of things. So um, we shot Chrome and My Feelings. Um, that live session, that was um, really the last thing that we shot for a minute. And that was like the last day of um, California being open. So after wow. that, <laughs> yeah. So after that, we, we ended up shooting Nights I Cry in quarantine, um, but that was, that was, pretty challenging and there was definitely you know just a lot of delays originally the uh, project was tr we were trying to drop it um, at the beginning of the summer you know it ended up being in August just because of you know everything just being in slow motion so you definitely took it back to like those classic tracks on Chrome uh, because that track is almost eight minutes long and you don't see you don't see it too many tracks like that anymore, but they used to make songs like that back in the day. It'd be like five to 10 minutes long. Right. Um, <laughs> so how have you adjusted to everything uh, that's been happening? Like what does a typical day look like for you? You know, what's your, your, your flow like now? Luckily for me, you know, um, I'm an independent artist. I work for myself. So I've always worked from home. Um, you know, the most adjustment was my son not being in, you know, his school and having to be in Zoom. Um, so that was a little bit of adjustment. But everything else we got to, we 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 adjusted fairly quickly because, you know, I, I do most of my workouts outside, go hiking. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty much a homebody anyway. I feel like I'm always in quarantine <laughs> outside of the <laughs> so... I feel you on that. So I kind of want to take it back for a second because you were introduced to music at an early age. Both of your parents were musicians, right? Absolutely not. No? <laughs> no. Okay. No, 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 no. My, my father just had like a, a, a huge love for music. Uh, my, my uncle, rest in peace, he was the musician of the family, my, my dad's brother. Um, okay. But I think if my mom heard that she was a musician, she would probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, when, when did you first love, uh, fall in love with music then? When, when I was a child driving around Long Beach with my dad, he, you know, he was a young dad and my dad was like 24, 25 okay. when I was years old. So um, he was driving, listening to Biggie, listening to whoever, just, I mean, Full to the max all the time, temptations, everything. So my dad just had this super eclectic um, collection of music. And that was just whether we were in the house, the car, anywhere we were at, it was like, we're playing music. There's, there's no silence. It's always going to be some music playing. So who were some of your early inspirations? Um, Michael Jackson was definitely my first love. Like, that was my first inspiration. Moonwalker. Um, yeah. not over and over and over again until my tape broke. Um, Michael and Janet were definitely the first ones, <laughs> Whitney, and then, um, and then Sade for sure. That was like my early years. And then when we got into like teenager, it was Aaliyah, Tupac, you know, and that whole, that whole, 
generation of amazing R&B singers. Yeah. The early 2000s, just like that whole vibe. So when did you realize that you were going to make a career out of music and this is what your passion was and this is what you wanted to do? I mean, I've, I've wanted to be a musician since I was a little girl. I never knew anything. I'd never thought I wanted to be anything different. Um, I just, I just knew that this is what I wanted to do. So I think I, I finally started taking music very seriously in high school, got with a vocal coach. You know, I started doing, um, talent shows and solo and ensemble and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I, I think high school was like, okay, I, I really, I really want to make a career out of this. So like, what are some of the steps that I would take, you know, to do that? And, um, yeah, it was in high school. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about the X stage project you just released. Uh, very solid. Talk to me about the name first. How'd you come up with it? X tapes. Um, it's, it's exactly that. It's, you know, it's a uh, recorded, um, pieces about, um, ex relationships and, you know, ex lovers and, um, just experiences in the past. So that's how I kind of came up with that. And it, and it was like a nostalgic feel too, because I knew I was going to, you know, really get into that R and B and I really, you know, I studying Mary and, you know, I yeah. just like make people like feel me. So, um, that, that kind of, I felt like that, that name was like also very nostalgic that would, um, you know, fully encompass what I was trying to deliver to. So I can say firsthand, you definitely accomplished that because I felt the songs on there. The ones that I really felt that I felt the passion on was Rain. Okay. I, I felt like that was just some like some just good baby making music right there. And you mentioned it earlier, Nights I Cry. Um, yeah. Because you were really telling a story there. So I, I'm interested to see. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't know. Did you get a chance to finish those visuals? You were talking about you were having like some difficulty finishing like yeah, videos. Yeah, no, I took cries out. Um, okay. Yeah, we shot that. Shout out to the team. We had like five guys and plus me, and we were just kind of um, guerrilla styling the whole thing out in LA. And um, it's a really, it's a really dope little visual. You definitely got to check that out for Nights I Cry. Yes, I do got to check it out because I do like that song. Yeah. Um, what was your creative process going into this project? As you were talking about that, you you, you know you were. Uh, you wanted to give more and wanted people to feel it. So what mindset did you have to get into? What was your thought process and your creative process? Well, this project started with Space. So Space was the first song that I wrote on the project in my living room, being a sad girl. Um, and uh, I, wrote, I wrote a few records around that time. Space was the one that really stood out. I wrote that with uh, a girl named Merges and Business Boy and, um, I kind of got out of that that frame of mind for a while, and so I wrote all these up tempos. I wrote with different art, um, different writers that were really pushing me, you know, outside my box, and that was cool. But I I just felt that there was like something really really special with space, and I felt like I needed to build a story around that because that was just like that was like straight from the heart. That was from me, you know. What I mean, that was like really a moment in time. Um, so that's what I did. I, I went back to the drawing board and then, um, you know, just going through more experiences. Obviously, I wrote Space two years ago. So, yeah, I was able to, you know, live some more life, have some more experiences and and be able to get back to the studio and write songs from a genuine place. And um, shout out to Daz. Daz, uh, she wrote All for Nothing and she co-wrote um we wrote all a uh, nights i cried together as well and me and daz literally we just we were both in our sad girl uh mode and you know pulled up to the studio rolled up and it was just like let's go so <laughs> wow do, do, you know do you think your best music comes out of like times when you are in that mindset when you know when, when you do have the broken heart because people always say Sad Mary will give you more than happy Mary. 
Do you feel like <laughs> that's kind of similar for you two? No, we love Side Mary and um I we mean we want Mary to be happy, but like when she's sad, Mary, oh man. We just you know, it's just I think with anybody it's just something different, you know what I mean? And and one thing that everybody can relate to is pain. No, you know, nobody goes through this life without pain. So I just think that that kind of strikes a different chord. Um, but for me, I, I don't think that I wouldn't say that maybe it may. I mean, I think that this is my best work to date. Um, but rain Sounds really good. I wrote all by myself, um, you know, with the engineer and that's a vibe and that's not sad. So um, I think it just ranges. I think it's just about being in that moment and that vibe and, you know what I mean, just, like, feeling the music. I, I said this before. It's, like, when when the music is already there, it's just so easy to write to, and it just kind of flows out, so. No doubt. Well, speaking of rolling up, uh, I, I heard that you are a cannabis educator and <laughs> that you are passionate about dispelling the – the untruths about, you know, weed and this stuff. One, what, what got you into that in the first place? And two, you know, let us know some of the info about cannabis that you've discovered that people may or may not know. Okay, well, I, this is the first time I'm hearing that I'm a cannabis educator. That's the word on the street. That's the word on the street. Okay, well, guys, I'm going to make sure now that I am super educated so I can give you guys <laughs> very accurate information. Um, but no, honestly, um, it was kind of like an organic thing. I smoke. I have, you know, for a while, I smoke anxiety, creativity. And um, I just, I was just like, you know, part of X tapes is just like living in my truth, you know, being vulnerable, being open, not, you know, caring about what people think. And, you know, part of that is being open about cannabis and, and just breaking the taboo, being a woman smoking, like, uh, you know, it's an, it's an essential now. We know that, you know, well, not all of us, but, you know, for, for the smokers, I think a lot of people know that, there are so many health benefits to cannabis. Um, I, I tell this story a lot where I worked in a weed shop for like two months. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, like several years ago with a bunch of girlfriends and um, it was way too fun and not a lot of work done. But <laughs> the, <laughs> the one thing that I took away from that was um, seeing cancer patients come in and um, you know, get a prescription for it um, instead of getting chemo. And so I would have conversations with these people and they were literally opting out of chemo and smoking, you know, for their pain. And that was what really like kind of opened my mind up to be like, okay, you know what? It's not about just like getting high. Like some of these people are really using it as an alternative to, you know, um, chemotherapy, which is a life or death situation in a lot of cases. Yeah. So um, I just think that there's so much miseducation and I, I just, I feel like I'm not, I wouldn't be who I am if I were to just, you know, do it and, and not, you know, educate people on it, I suppose. Yeah. Yes. A cannabis educator, like, like the word on the street is, but no, that that's good. Cause I, you know, I can talk from firsthand experience. There are older members of my family who do like edibles, and they said yeah. like it's it, it's made them sleep better. Yeah. You know? Oh, my and grand. She's um she's recovering from cancer. I'm so proud of her. She's just been fighting through it, and you know, I I understand the old ways, but you know, just for even her to be like, uh, I tried some CBD gummies, and you know, <laughs> I, I ate. You know, I was able to eat, eat my whole meal like. That really, really wore my heart because, you know, she wasn't getting food down. So it's like I, I just challenge people to educate themselves before judging other people, um, you know, especially now. It's it's an essential for a reason. Absolutely. Absolutely. What's one thing that people don't really know about you or most people wouldn't know about you? Um, I'm a big nerd. Yeah. I yeah, I like, 
um, conspiracy theory, alien. <laughs> like I, you know, on I, I would say like, if I'm not doing music, if I'm not working on something creative, I love uh, watching documentaries with my brother talking about other dimensions and alien shit. Yeah. So I'm sure people wouldn't just assume that of me. I would not assume that of you, but I think that's pretty cool because I'm into the same stuff. So nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Yeah. Um, I'm going a, I'm to a wrap it up on this question right here. Obviously, 2020 has been a challenging year. It's been something that we've never seen, but it's also been a time for like self-reflection because that's we're right. not able to move around the way that we're accustomed to moving around. Right. Is there anything that you've learned either about yourself or about life in general during this time? Sheesh, so much. Um, this has been this has been a super eye opening year for me. Um, I think, like you said, because we've had the opportunity to sit with ourselves and be with ourselves, and forced to, you know, um, just take more time with things. And I think that, you know, I've just definitely got um, back back in touch with nature and, you know, things that have always been important to me, to my family, um, that, you know, getting in the hustle and bustle of things and being in the industry and just trying to keep up with everything, I think, you know, takes away from that a lot. So I definitely have done so much growing and, you know, self-reflection and just really, you know, trusting in, in myself and just putting myself out there and being confident in, you know, in self and uh, finding your self-worth again, I think. Awesome right there. Well, listen, I appreciate your time. I've enjoyed this conversation. Absolutely. If you're in this live right now and you haven't done so already, make sure you go listen to X Tapes. It is a phenomenal project. We look forward to what you have going on in the future. And X Tapes Part 2 is coming sooner than you guys think. Yes, I Okay, see. we're getting a Part 2. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. So make sure you listen to Part 1, and yes. we look forward to Part 2. But be safe, stay in contact, and we will talk soon. Peace. Thanks, guys. Thank you.